So the gallery works as a composite work, meaning you enter a process of thinking in which certain things cohabit, some made by me, some made by others, but all of them useful, or in fact, absolutely important for me to be able to articulate a way of thinking. So it's a display, it's an exhibition, but it's also an artwork and it's also a process of thinking. A process of thinking that in a way has accompanied me for the last two years, but you only see the resulting uh, images, the resulting objects of that process. So the new work that I made for the gallery is completely new for me in the sense that I'm not an image maker and I've actually produced three very, very large scale images or let's call them paintings. Um, that uh, are in, in many ways, they look handmade, but they're actually the result of very complicated, machinic, algorithmic, scripted actions that try and mimic the mimicker. So try and mimic how cephalopods actually mimic their environment and they therefore become part of it. So the images are in some ways studies or resulting studies of uh, an animal that is capable of becoming what surrounds it and therefore cohabit with the world that it's in, in a way that humans are incapable of doing. So my interest in cephalopods actually comes from my interest in colour reproduction, especially the processes of colour separation which allow us to produce images that look like reality but are effectively the result of more often than not the CMYK process. So the mixing of four inks to replicate things that we see. This is part of the history of photography, of course. Uh, I've always been interested in these processes and uh, finding ways to separate the colors as a way of introducing a fifth element, which is time. What happens in between these processes of layering color. And that's how I got to cephalopods, because of course, cephalopods have incredibly sophisticated ways of producing color producing color in a way that uh, we blush, for example. So producing in color in a way that we don't reproduce, but producing color in a way that has something to do with how you feel, how you think. Specifically, cephalopods have the capacity to think through their skin. So that skin produces color formations that has to do with how the animal is able to think in a fragmented, dispersed way. You know, time as a material to work with is quite a tricky one, right? Because it's the one that's most difficult to image, to make an image of. And uh, a lot of my work around exhibition makings and exhibitions as form has been uh, to try and find ways of capturing or at least including time and therefore change within the experience of an exhibition so that you might experience it in different ways if you go and see it in different moments, but also uh, rather than just arriving somewhere and seeing things that are being displayed for you, uh, to think of the audience as uh, people who have the capacity to be exposed to an aesthetic experience. So trying to reverse uh, the relationships at stake in exhibition making. And that's why time, I think, is the, is the key ingredient because the experience needs to unfold in time. The issue of time is intimately related to the issue of labor. Uh, and within an exhibition making context, within a museum or a gallery context, you know, which is precisely made for people to see things, see things, not see those who made them, not see the processes that made them possible in the same way. I think this becomes part of a larger political project which is to restitute labor to the artifacts that we encounter and come to us through culture. So including labor as part of what you see, understanding the labor involved in objects as a way of extracting them from commodification, as extracting them from being uh, uh, these precious, mysterious artifacts that come from nowhere and are supposed to be in some way magical. Uh, is a way of killing them, of course, <laughs> but is also a way of integrating culture within everyday life and therefore 
doing something that you know I keep trying to do and that is extremely important to me, which is thinking of culture as a relationship of intimacy, meaning cultural artifacts are often very distant from us. You're not allowed to get close to things in a museum. Everybody knows that. But what is that distance? And how can we reduce that distance to make culture a part of an integrated form of life rather than removing them uh, and making them into fetish? So all of the things that you see in this gallery are extremely important to me. And they're also really extremely important relationships. Uh, I don't actually know all the artists, but I still have relationships with their work. For example, we have a work of Delphine Rest, who is a Swiss artist I've never actually met. But yeah, I find her work extremely important. I think her practice has been influential to me. I've, I've uh, had an exhibition in a gallery where she recently had an exhibition. So I've dealt with the remains of her work before, and I think about her work quite a lot. But uh, this, by chance, I found this piece that had to do with, uh, it's, it, it's, an, it's a machine made into an animal, basically, or rather its processes look like an animal process to us. It looks like it's peeing, basically, but it's peeing four color inks. And in many ways, that is a reminder of the full color reproduction process and how much of that actually comes from what we call nature. There are works that I do not know who they were made by, uh, like two ancient Egyptian canopic jars who look after the animal remains in the gallery, uh, as their primary role was to be the keepers of uh, organs, happy, the god of the lungs, keeper of the lungs and a human figure who uh, was in charge of keeping the liver towards the future. So they're there on a display looking after the remains of a fish by Revital Cohen and Thür van Balen. Uh, another, it's an artist duo I have a very strong relationship to. Uh, there's three works by them actually two uh, models, an assembly model and a color model for an artwork that is somehow uh, a process of reverse mining, um, and two works that are also animal remains, this fish, this colorless sterile fish that was born in a lab, lived a very happy life, but was almost entirely artificially produced, and a work called Blue Roan, which is exactly against representation. It actually contains a blue roan, a purebred racehorse, rather than representing it. Well, a very important part of the, of the exhibition experience, of course, is the soundtrack. The soundtrack, which I specially commissioned from Hannah Catherine Jones, a musician, composer, who I greatly admire. I, I had never worked with her before. This was a really, interesting uh, opportunity. I, I asked uh, Hannah to give these images a soul. That was my brief, <laughs> which is why they're called auras, because it is her sound that allows them to talk back 